has become a large factor in day-to-day -day lives. From our online classes all the way to the recreational team, where most of us tend to play video games and watch movies. Although it's not the most healthiest option we have. Right, Rushin? You're correct, Mario. Everything in this modern world has its own pros and cons. So does ICT. Although ICT helps us a lot in education, we should always be aware of its negatives as well. As always, too much of anything is not good. That is actually why ICT Day is one of our school traditions. ICT being something that develops day by day, its complications and determines get more and more complicated as well. Hence, we have ICT Day in order to improve our knowledge with these issues and understand ICT better. That myself, Rushila Bekhor, and my friend Lavinash gladly and proudly welcome you to our school's first ever online ICT Day. So, without any further ado, we invite some of our friends to start off our today's proceedings with a prayer. <laughs> आदरणीय देवियाँ, आदवागे लास्सन हैं, सुवपद दावसा गुणनाट हैं, उबोहान सेर मात से स्तुति कर ले, आद दावसे सम्राने के दिन दिवन हैं, आईसीटी दिने के न उबोहान सेर स्तुति करना, सहम ताप्स ने आपको दिन मानने, देवियाँ मान से के जीव मान मागा पेन में मखारना आने से, एक न उबोहान सेर अनेक बार एक स्तुति करना लोकवासी सीरु दिना यीशु के लेवड़े बार कर क्याटात करना तरह सीरु में पासर सहोदर सहोदरियन यीशु के हास्तेर बार करना पिया नहीं ये बासंगत इकमणी दुरु ऐला आपटे इकमणी पास अल्लान पुलाम पुलाम बादे नहीं मागे पिया नहीं ये मागे मागे विधुल पति तुम्हारे तुलु सीरु में गुरुवरु गुरुवरियन यीशु के लेवड़े मैं सैम देख मिलना सीखें ने अपनी साकुरी से बात तो यीशु क्रिस्टस वहाँ से गे अतिरुद्ध मुन आमिन आमिन समाधन भी मट पहले नमस्कार एकी नमो तस्स बगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धस नमो तस्स बगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धस नमो तस्स बगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धस बुद्धं सरनं गच्छामि दम्मं सरनं गच्छामि संगं सरनं गच्छामि बुद्धियं पि बुद्धं सरनं गच्छामि बुद्धियं पि दम्मं सरनं गच्छामि बुद्धियं पि संगं सरनं गच्छामि तत्यं पि बुद्धं सरनं गच्छामि तत्यं पि दम्मं सरनं गच्छामि तत्यं पि संगं सरनं गच्छामि पानातिपाता वेरमणि सिक्का पदं समाधियामि अदिन्नादाना वेरमणि सिक्का पदं समाधियामि कामेशुमिच्छाचारा वेरमणि सिक्का पदं समाधियामि मुसावादा वेरमणि सिक्का पदं समाधियामि सुब्रामेरे मज्जपमादट्टाना वेरमणि सिक्का पदं समाधियामि साधु 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 तिरचित्रम बलम पुत्रेन्दायनम पुन्दिन पुन्नडी ऐतादारिले यन्मुंकार ओ तुर में अबोली बलिवालं कई कुतिरु
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم قريب المحبوب عليهم ولا دعالين آمين in the name of Allah, the most beneficent and the most merciful. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the most beneficent and the most merciful, Master of the Day of Judgment. Thee do we serve and thee do we beseech for help. Keep us on the right path, the path of those upon whom you have bestowed favours, not the path of those upon whom your wrath is brought down, nor of those who have gone astray. I now invite our ICT club president, Jadukeshan Saiswaran, to deliver the welcome speech. Good morning to all of you. It is indeed an honor and privilege to extend a warm welcome to our distinguished chief guest, Mr. Ravin Vijay Tilaka, our headmaster, Father Nihal Fernando, teachers, members of the staff, my fellow colleagues, and all the viewers who are watching on YouTube. Before I proceed any further, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our chief guest, Mr. Rabin Vijay Tilaka. He is the CEO of In-Game Entertainment. Thank you, sir, for taking time off your busy schedule to join us today. Technology has always been there to assist and help us pursue our goals and interests. However, in the last two years, it has become an absolute necessity due to the ongoing pandemic and has given us a way to continue our academic and extracurricular activities whilst being confined to our homes. But this has brought up negative issues such as digital addiction as well. We, as the members of the ICT club, felt a strong need to create awareness of this issue among students so that they do not fall prey to it. Therefore, we have chosen the theme Overcoming Digital Addiction for this year's ICT day to show that IT is just a tool and you are the master. With that in mind, I would like to invite our headmaster to say a few words. My dear students, let me express my sentiments of gratitude for inviting me to address you all today. We are gathered virtually to mark our ICT day. This year, you have chosen the theme Overcoming Digital Addiction. Internet and computer use are growing in modern society and have changed the way we live our lives. Hence, we are all have got addicted to digital technology. The effects of internet addiction in psychological functions, mental health, and general well-being is growing in leaps and bounds. Just last year, data from the Digital Research Center showed that 77% of Americans connect to the internet on a daily basis. It is same here in Sri Lanka, among the young and the old. While many people think surfing the web is a relatively harmless act, there are some people who spend so much of time using internet that has begun to interfere with their daily lives. When an action or desire becomes a hindrance and takes precedence over the most important aspects of one's life, like relationships, work and school, it can be classified as an addiction. My dear students, studies have revealed that digital addiction seriously affects 
mental health of human beings. Digital addiction is a broad term that covers a range of behaviors and impulse control problems involving internet, personal computer, and mobile technology. While there is no official accepted criteria to diagnose an internet addiction, researchers have identified five subcategories of specific types of computer and internet addictions. First, cyber sex addiction. It involves online phonography. It can certainly be harmful to children as well as adults. Secondly, net compulsions. It concerns interactive activities online that can be extremely harmful, such as online gambling, online auctions, etc. Thirdly, cyber relationship addiction. These addictions are deeply involved with finding and maintaining relationships and including real life, family and friends. Fourthly, compulsive information seeking. The internet provides users with a wealth of data and knowledge. For some, it has turned into an uncontrollable urge to gather and organize data, and it has become an obsession. The last point, fifth point, gaming addiction. Computer addiction sometimes refer to computer gaming addiction levels online and offline activities that can be done with a computer. In the recent past, children have been addicted to gaming, especially during these lockdowns, as there is a need for us to save our children from digital addiction while teaching them how to use digital platforms with responsibility. My dear students, as a headmaster of this school, I want our students not to fall prey to these modern temptations. May God bless you all. The Lord is my shepherd. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for your kind words. We be very official. And our friends might be getting a little bored, Larinash. You might be correct, Rochelle. Let's show everyone that very special video we have been working on for some time now. All content shown here are for entertainment purposes only. No students were armed in the making of this video. <sighs> Today is a school day, I think. Oh no, I'm gonna be late. Why is this a mess? Why is there a toothbrush? We'll just make up an excuse. All right, students, today we are going to talk about friction. So when you think about any topic, the first thing you get to your mind is what is that? So today we have what is friction? Does anyone know the answer? Uh, I guess no one knows the answer, so I'll say the answer. Friction is the resistance that one surface or an object encounters when moving over another. Friction is caused by the interactions between the tiny bumps on surfaces as they rub against each other. A few moments later. So let me ask a question. Um, I'll ask Kevin. This question goes to you. Oh no! Tell me, what are the two things that affect friction? 
So, uh, can you please repeat the question? Why game? What is this? You never pay, pay attention in the class. You always ask the question again and again. <sighs> All right, then I say it again. Only one more time. Okay. So, can you tell me what are the two things that affect friction? So, the answer is... Uh, that. Danish, uh, series. Sorry? Good games, good game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see the last episode? What oh, even yeah, I didn't yeah, see the first it. episode. What about Adi, sir? Yeah, I, I, guess I, I don't I don't really Jin, have Jin, can you send me the downloaded version of morning, the Can you hear me? Uh, me too. Ah, uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Okay. Good morning. Stop talking. Now let's get into the lesson. So now I'm going to teach you what will be coming for the whole level exams. Please pay attention. So, especially pay your attention to perimeter. I taught everything. Huh? Don't forget. Don't come up with excuses saying, so I made Jin, that mistake, this mistake. Jin, do you have bubble wraps? Uh, yeah, bro. I, 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 Oi, I'll, oh, I'll darat. Students! You. Stop it. Listen. Will you get 9F? Huh? Do you all want a 9F? Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. I can't do this. Sorry, really sorry, sir. Really sorry. Sir, sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Yes, sir. Did you watch Squid Game? What did I say now? Huh? Listen to what I say. See, look at Takshidan. Such a good boy. He is listening. What has happened to him today? Very good, Takshidan. Ask any questions, huh? Don't hesitate. Okay, students. So next, we are going to look at square root. I taught everything on square root. You have to. Do it correctly. It's all your job. I can't be coming behind you every time. And next, triangles. You know the congruency cases. Side, side, side. Side, angle, side. Uh, right angle, hypotenuse, and side. You all have to remember this. Huh? You all just can't forget this and come up with uh, excuses. Just telling that I forgot this. Uh, that's uh. a lot of boring math later. Okay, students. So we have come to the end of the lesson. Do you all have any questions? Okay, I know all of you all don't have questions because you all were not listening. I know Takshidan, do you have any questions? He's listening. Takshidan. Takshidan, can you hear me? Sir, sir, uh, I'm too tired. Sir, can we leave, please? You can scold Takshidan later. Can we leave? Since class is over. Leave, leave. I know you all don't have uh -huh. any questions. Thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. Bye, sir. Uh -huh. Thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. Have a nice day. So, uh, is it compulsory to leave or can I just wait and see your school with Get out of the class. I'm removing you now. Wait. So, uh, so okay, so I'll leave. So, don't remove me. Takshidan? Bro, bro, there's an enemy in front of you, man. Behind the tree, behind the tree. The class has finished already. Yeah, I am. Enemy spotted. For real this time. Hey guys, I think no one came for the last class except Adisha. We'll be taking the attendance and the, the excuses as well. So let's start with Danush. Danush, why didn't you attend the last class? Uh, sir, basically, sir, what do you call uh, Sir, uh, I couldn't find my laptop, sir. Oh, really? When did the laptop start working? Whatever. Let's go to the next person then. What about Jadu? Oh, sorry. I think he's still connected to his audio. So, what about Kr Kritikesh? Sir, say my brother, sir. He put super glue to my laptop. I couldn't open it. Come up with better excuses, Kritikesh. Then, what about Jaden? Sir, sir, it's not my fault. It's all Windows 10's fault. I, I opened my laptop. Windows 10, uh, 10 doesn't work. So I had to change it to something. No? I didn't trust Windows 11, so I went back to Windows 7. As soon as I uh, changed it to Windows 7, none of my applications work, even Teams. So I had to change it back to Windows 10. So that took the entire day. That's why I said I couldn't join. What? Did you tell me that you are using MacBook? So why on earth would you downgrade it to Windows 7, man? 
I'll get back to you. What about Savin today? Sir, I had a funeral, sir. Our chumpang uncle died. I'm going to miss his cream buns. Oh, really? Then get out from the meeting there. What's going in the class? Jati Gesen, you cheated me, man. Oh my God. Everyone is cheating in the class. Get out from the class right now. Hi Boomer, what are you doing so early? The class starts at 8, I think. I love studying, man. I thought sir will come early. What is your problem? No, no, nothing. Just ask. Hey, guys. Hey, bro, what's up? Hi, hi, bro, what's up? Hello. After a long time. Good morning, students. Good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning sir. sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning, students. The students, did they give you any homework? Um, no, yes, sir. No, sir. Page 123. No, sir. Sir, no, sir, you gave, sir, in 123, activity 12, sir. You told us to do that. No, sir, he's lying, sir. You didn't give anything. See this, sir. You didn't give anything. He's lying. And you stop it, okay? I know about you now. You don't come for classes. You just chat with everybody and you just watch the cricket matches and sleep at home. Eating, eating, nothing. No, you don't study, but Kritika is a nerd, okay? He's actually a nerd. He studies. He comes for classes and everything. He studies. Okay, I know I don't, don't care about you. No. You will just don't study and get lost anywhere. I don't care about the marks you so students, uh, today we are going to study about world war, okay? So students, there are two world wars in uh, the world, okay? So the first one was started in 1914 by Germany. So students, how did they start at first? Is this deserved. Germany? Yes, any doubt? So I have doubt. Yes, how do you know that the world war started in 1914? Were you there? That we are studying history, okay? This is not my experience. I'm just reading what's there on the book. Don't ask some stupid question, okay? Like you. Okay, I'll move on. So, students, how did this start? It is the Germany tried to make their country a powerful country, okay? So, they fought with all the other countries, and that's how this world war became. Any doubt, students? Yes, Kritikis, you can ask. Sir, will World War Three come, sir? And will our country be there in World War Three? Critic is that depends on the situation, okay? This is not something needed right now, okay? Students, uh, that's all for today. Huh? Then we'll meet next class. Okay? So, students, goodbye. Stay safe. Thank you, sir. Bye. And God bless. Bye bye. Thank you, sir. What do you think? Do you have any doubts? Huh? Mm. Sir, you didn't give any homework, sir. Congratulations, guys. We have done, we are done with the syllabus. Okay, so now does anyone have any questions regarding computer programming and languages? Okay, nice. Since no one has any questions, I'll ask questions now. Adisha, what are the types of control structures? Answer me. Um, so it's sequence, selection, and repetition. Okay, nice. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, next up, Takshidan. Uh, Takshidan, can you answer my question? The question for you is, what are the types of network tip, uh, topologies? Explain. So, I was think the answer. No, I, I feel like Takshidan is having a network so, issue. It's fine. We can ask someone else. Yeah. You can ask. Takshi, you have started doing TikTok again. Uh, uh, so, um, sorry. I'll get back to you. What about Savindu? Sir, we had a funeral, sir. Our Chumpang uncle died, and I'm gonna miss his cream buns. <laughs> I'll get back to you. What about Savindu? Sir, we had a very sad funeral, sir. Our Chumpang uncle died. I'm gonna miss his cream buns. <laughs> Avinash. Okay, so that's uh, that's all for today, huh? Saying that really shows how creative our preparers can be, isn't that so, Avinash? And also how forward and confident they truly are. Of course, how could I forget? I now invite our chief guest, Ravi Vijay Filaka, CEO of Indian Entertainment. Headmaster, teachers parents and students. It's a great privilege to be addressing the fifth annual ICT day for the first time being held virtually. I want to congratulate everyone involved in putting together today's activities. Uh, it's very well done and I'm glad to be a part of it. Uh, let me introduce myself and give a little bit of a back uh, story for context. I am Raveen Vijaytalaka. I am the CEO of an in-game entertainment private limited. Most people in Sri Lanka know us as Gamer.lk. And I'm also the founder president of the Sri Lanka Esports Association. I suppose it's apt that the school has invited me to virtually grace the occasion and speak on the topic of overcoming digital addiction. It's a highly discussed topic these days. Uh, believe it or not, it's been almost two decades since I left prep back in 2002 after my O levels. Uh, in school, I played cricket, I vice captain the school football and tennis teams uh, and played leading roles in a number of clubs, including the radio club and interact club. Although I look like I just left school with my, you know, lockdown buzz cut, I've been out of prep for almost 20 years, uh, joined St. Thomas's College Mount for my A-levels, uh, did my bachelor's in computing and then finished my postgraduate in web technology. Uh, in the UK. I thereafter started working in web technology related roles from the British Council and then spent the next eight years climbing the corporate ladder at a digital and software company. In 2018, I quit my corporate job and went all in as CEO of my own company, raised a seed round of investment and have now grown to provide games and esports services to clients across the South Asian region. The reason I gave you my backstory is to give some context on what I want to talk about in terms of managing digital addiction. So let's understand what addiction is. 
uh, us being into technology and connectivity, it's important to go slightly into the biological aspect to really understand what's going on inside our brains. So every time you take an action, that is, you take a sip of a drink, you talk to a friend, you hit a ball with a bat, you know, you middle that uh, cricket shot, or even if you like win a video game match, uh, your brain releases dopamine. It's dopamine is a happy chemical where when dopamine is released, it makes you feel happy for that instant. It's, it's, it's like a shot of happiness straight into your brain. And where things get addictive is when you keep craving that dopamine hit, um, whether it's another drink, whether it's another social media TikTok video or another match. So once your drink is over, you want to, you know, the dopamine goes down, happiness levels go down. So what you want to do is you want to have that second drink and then the third and the fourth. Same goes for social media. You're scrolling through Facebook or Instagram or TikTok. You see a post, small dopamine hit, happiness, and then it dies down. Then you want to see the next post. And rinse and repeat, and then you suddenly find yourself four hours later that you have been spent half the day um, on social media uh, just to get that, you know, the, the little happiness shots in your brain. And that's how you start craving more and more. And I'm, I'm of course, oversimplifying it. Um, I'm, sim I'm simplifying it to a certain extent where, you know, it's, a, it's easily explainable. It's, it's far more complex than this. Um, but that is the basic of, you know, where this addiction and the craving comes from. Um, and it's important to be smart about it. Happiness is everyone's goal. But a key to long-term happiness is going to be achieving that in a balanced method. So the dopamine hit that you get for those few seconds of um, the TikTok video or winning the match is going to last you just those that moment. And you're going to have to keep repeating that over and over and over again if you are to sustain that over a period of time, which is not sustainable in most cases. And it is people who try to sustain those short-term dopamine hits, short-term moments of happiness that usually sort of go awry and uh, they don't really do it in a sustainable way. And that's where you need to find happiness in a more sustainable long-term method. And so we're talking about friends, family, conversation, sports, culture. Um, this actually reminds me of an interesting experiment called the Stanford Marshmallow Experiment. It's about delayed gratification. Um, and it, it, it's uh, a little more complex that I'm going to explain it, but I'll simplify it. Uh, it. It was done with children. So they had a bunch of children brought into a room and individually, and they were given a marshmallow on a plate in front of them. And they were told, uh, you can have this marshmallow, you can eat it, or you can wait five minutes and then you can have two marshmallows. And so the experiment was to see whether um, they would, the, the kid would take that marshmallow instantly or whether they'd wait that five minutes patiently and then have the marshmallow, the two marshmallows <clears throat> as a reward afterwards. So I think um, most children failed it, failed it in the sense they, you know, decided to have the uh, individual marshmallow instead of delaying gratification and getting two. Um, but the people, the kids who did wait to wait those five minutes and get the reward at the end, they used certain te techniques to distract them during those five minutes. It wasn't them just staring at a marshmallow for five minutes. Some people sang, some people played with their fingers, some, one kid slept, um, one kid just looked at the roof and started praying. And so they did various, various different um, things that probably worked for them in order to <clears throat> um, 
spend that five minutes without it becoming a problem for them. And so those are the people who, who went on to sort of get that reward in the end. And so on a high level, these are the things you need to be thinking about. So one of the biggest piece, pieces of advice I have, especially for people and students at this young age, <clears throat> is being self-aware. Being self-aware, I think, um, is one of the biggest um, factors and biggest learnings that you can have. And what that mean, means is just learn as much as you can about yourself, what you're good at, what you're not good at, what you can improve on, how you react to certain things. Um, once you have a great understanding of yourself, then you are better geared to face whatever is coming towards you. Uh, if you know, for example, that you are um, easily addicted to things like social media, you now have won half the battle because you know it's a problem. If you don't know that it's a problem, then like you can't even start fixing it. Um, if you know that you're addicted to video games and you're spending way too much time, step number one is awareness. Step number two is actually doing something about it. So once you're aware of what you're weak at, you can actually address the problem. And there are many, many ways that you can address the problem. Um, there are some very practical ways that it can be done. We are all um, into technology. And most things that you do in your personal life can now be tracked using technology. Whether it's how much time you spend on social media, whether it's how much time you spend <clears throat> playing games, whether it's how much time you spend on YouTube. Um, there are apps. There's an app for it. You can track it. Uh, because again, like I said, self-awareness is half the battle. Then the knowledge of you know data and statistics about what the problem is, is also a major part of it. So if you know that you're spending eight hours on Facebook, you now know that where you are at and where you need to reduce. And um, there are many ways that can be done. There are apps for it. Um, your, your, if, it if you're a mobile gamer, for example, so Google, um, Android itself has um, app trackers. And so you can use these tools um, to limit yourself. If you're playing eight hours of video games and that's becoming a problem for you and your family and your friends, then you know that, okay, eight hours is my current number. I'm going to reduce that to six hours tomorrow or the next week. Uh, reachable goals. From six hours, then I'm going to reduce it to four hours. That other two or four hours that <clears throat> I reduced, we might, um, you know, put it into something else. It might be something easier like social media. It might be something completely different like reading a book or spending time with family or, you know, sitting down with your parents and watching the telegram that uh, they're watching. Uh, but it's since you have identified that the video gaming is a problem for you, problem in the sense you're getting addicted to it or social media or whatever, you have identified that and you're making a conscious effort to now manage it. Beyond that, it's all about um, just developing good habits is really important. Um, another major thing that I think uh, I need to advise, especially the young students is understand that your parents aren't your enemies. Um, I completely understand how, especially in your teenage years, where if you're in the middle of a TV series or if you're in the middle of a really intense uh, PUBG match, for example, and you're chasing that chicken dinner and your parents come and tell you, okay, Puta, now uh, pause the game. Uh, it's time for lunch or it's time to get your homework done. In that moment, your, your, the parent that told you that is probably your biggest enemy. Um, and that's, uh, that is normal for you to feel that way. But it's really important that you understand that um, the, the reaction you're feeling is biological. It's not logical. Um, and because, you know, your, 
you're about to get that dopamine hit and then someone stops you that person is a bad person um that that's what your brain is telling you but uh, it's important that you're smart about it and you understand that you know it's just a temporary thing that uh, you know your the person who's trying to sort of get your attention is not out to harm you um and uh, uh, they are always sort of looking out for you um whether it's you know uh, what whatever the scenario is it's uh, your parents aren't your enemies and that's i think something important to i have um, been through the same thing by the way huge gamer myself um, my parents were uh, of course very supportive of it and uh, uh because there was a great balance between it but um speaking from personal experience now that i'm you know 35 years old um uh i i can basically completely understand uh some of you all uh, who are watching this will also go on to be parents and you all will most likely be doing the exact same thing that your parents are doing to you all so uh, don't give them a hard time about it um the next thing i want to talk about is discipline and excellence that's actually uh, uh something that is really really important at any level in life in any stage of life so i am very much involved in the esports scene we work with um sri lanka's best esports athletes by the way just very quickly esports is a recognized national sport there's a national team people get paid millions of rupees in prize money they get salaries for taking part in international and representing um sri lanka at the national level that they have uh, national colors for esports athletes and so what this means is even for something like video games you can't really succeed unless you have a great discipline and always strive for excellence so when it comes to being the top level esports athlete you're required to train you're required to learn all strategies you're required to um practice with your team and just in general make sure you're putting out the best performance that you can do you can give uh whether it's at a practice session or whether it's at uh the next big international video game competition and that's something that you'll see throughout your life if you build that discipline whether it's for studies whether it's for um even if you're like creating content in the digital era if you're creating facebook posts if you're creating tiktoks just make sure that you're putting the best that you can into it uh in a healthy manner and of course um <clears throat> some parting words you're la um living during a great part of your lives uh where you are learning what you are okay at and what you can be great at um if you haven't figured that out yet experiment you are young enough to try as many things as possible uh and find a passion this goes with the whole uh being self aware and learning about yourself concept that i spoke about earlier but the only way you can actually find out about yourself is by trying as many things as possible and putting yourself in situations that you would not um normally put yourself for example if someone tells you to go ahead and give a speech in front of the entire school um you're probably going to say no but that is the perfect way to figure out um whether you whether you're going to love it or hate it uh and if you do hate it you will then know that that is a problem for you so that when you are put in a position of having to actually give a speech in front of everyone you are now prepared to you have understood that that is a problem area and you will learn from it you will learn to fix it and so i wish you all the very best of luck in these trying times and uh, congratulate you for taking this initiative and doing a splendid job of it uh, i'm i'm really happy to uh, be given this opportunity to speak to you all uh, thank you very much thank you very much sir for those kind words Let me ask you a question, Rochelle. What's your favorite thing to do in your free time? Very tough question. But I would have to say listening to music. Oh well, in that case, you are going to like the next segment a lot.
remember when a photograph was worth thousand words, thousand words. No thousand pictures come my way every day, and I like them all the same, but they can't take my breath away. I'm fighting for attention not to look. But I'm still leafing through the pages like the world's my open book. Why do I have something else to do? Feeling trapped behind the viewfinder to share it all with you. That's not what it's about. I'm so tired of missing out. Look on up to the sky. Wonder why. Have you ever tried to photograph the moon? I have to. I have to. Find it funny how it never turns out right. It's like someone poked a pinhole in the canvas of the night, and that's not what it's about. I'm so tired of missing out. Look up. Photograph the moon. I have to.
sounded amazing. I'm kind of jealous of their skills. <laughs> yes, definitely. Since you asked me a question earlier, I will ask you a question this time. What is the most difficult type of assignment for you? Hmm. I would have to say making presentations. Yes, that can be very tricky. Well, luckily for us, next up, we have Rupalavanya, Naveen and Joshua who will be showcasing us a few presentations through which we can all learn something new. Hi everyone, my name is Joshua Abraham and myself and two of my classmates have gotten together to create this presentation on overcoming digital addiction for you. So to start off, firstly, what is digital addiction? Being addicted to something doesn't necessarily mean like being addicted to something like digital doesn't necessarily mean doing something like online classes or watching something or even, you know, creating something that you're passionate about. Nor does it mean, you know, just because you game or like, you know, indulge yourself in other in any other hobby, it doesn't mean that you're addicted necessarily. What is addiction is when you want to stop, but you still have this tendency to keep going. When you think that you should be stopping now that, you know, you've been at it for some time, but now it's time to stop, but you're unable to stop because, you know, you're enjoying it so much that, you know, you're not able to put yourself in the right mind to stop. That is when you're addicted to something. Or that is when you would consider yourself to be addicted to something when, you know, after watching something, you're like, okay, I had to watch one more episode. I had to watch one more to do thing, do this one more, one more round. So that is when you know that you are really addicted to uh, something, right? Now it's a lot more easier to actually get addicted to something digitally or like to digital media because of things like instant gratification, where with like a very little effort, you're able to get so much of pleasure. You're able to get like this massive dopamine rush, which like, uh, distorts your actual like ability to you know move away from it and do something else or get do something more productive where you know you just become enslaved to continuously watching one after the other to do you know to play like another round or something not simply because of like pleasure itself but because it acts as a form of like a coping mechanism as well given like you know because everybody's stuck at home and all these days uh, given like that context as well you know digital media has become like a massive a method of coping with stress now because it does successfully help with coping of stress to an extent you sort of get addicted to that feeling as well where you know you enjoy the level of you know stress relief it provides and then you know through that also you get addicted because you're unable to stop so some you know side effects of being addicted except the more known ones like you know eye and vision issues you are also prone to things like adhd or even like anxiety and depression because you you continuously choose to distance yourself from everybody else in order to tend to these addictions where you know you try and separate yourself and get yourself alone with you know be it gaming or watching something um where you're which you're addicted to so the main issue with things like addiction is that you don't know that you're addicted you know you might be like okay you know what even though i'm you know even though i really enjoy it or something i'm not really addicted and, you know, because people aren't willing to admit to themselves that they actually are addicted, it's a lot harder for them to actually come out of those phases. So to actually explain to you on how you could recognize if you're addicted or not, Rupal Avani. Thank you, Joshua. How do you know that you're addicted to this digital media? So let's talk about social media. first. According to the research, more than 50% of the world population are now using social media. We can't force them to stop using them because we are in a pandemic situation where no one can go out and they don't have enough entertainment other than these devices. But we can't leave it like that. So there are some of the signs that you're addicted to the digital media. First thing is you get up in the morning and if you are that person who regularly checks your phone soon after you wake up, then you are one of those person who is addicted to them. Second thing is when you are doing your work or while in an online class, if you regularly check your phone, then that's also a sign that you are addicted. Third thing is if you send a message to someone and if he or she still didn't reply, although you have sent him or he the message, 
you would still wonder about the reply you would get the whole day or even a post you published in Instagram thinking whether you will get likes or not. If we consider another example like gaming, which is now one of the most demandable industries and vastly growing all over the world. Mostly young and teenagers are addicted to playing video games. It is fine to play them for about two hours a day, but playing for more than five hours a day is a complete addiction. Unless you earn money through gaming as a content creator or a professional gamer. While you are playing a game and if someone calls you for any certain help, at that instance, if you rage at them for calling, then that's a sign that you are addicted to it. Also, if you continue to play video games for several hours without knowing how much you have actually spent time on playing the games, that is also an addiction. So I call my fellow batsmate Navin to explain how we can come across these addictions. Thanks, Rupa. Hi, everyone. I'm Navin. Like Rupa said, I'm here today to help you all overcome digital addiction. Before that, you all should know the basic issues that are caused by this digital addiction. One of the major problems are health issues. Today, most of us are affected by these tragedies. I like to mention some of the health issues caused by this overuse of gadgets. When you continuously play games or spend more time unnecessarily in front of your devices, like Rupa said, you forget everything and only give utmost importance to the work you do with your gadget. And we can't also blame anyone for this because that's human nature. A human can, a normal human can only do a single thing properly at once. So we can't expect a person who is busy with a device to concentrate on many things. So similarly, they also forget their basic needs, such as food, water, and adequate rest. All of these will affect them in many ways. These bad practices also lead them to big, big problems. And let's have a look at that. Number one, when they are fully occupied with gadgets, they don't notice the bad postures. And this causes back aches, shoulder pain, neck pain, and all. Number two, when they exert more pressure on the wrist while using keyboard, mouse, or even by placing them incorrectly without them knowing it. This causes serious full form carpal tunnel syndrome, simply wrist pain. Number three, when they continuously see the screen nonstop, this causes dry eyes, redness in the eyes, blurred vision, pain in the head, back, neck, etc. A lot of things. This leads to CVS, which is computer vision syndrome. Fourth, the major one, when they keep on using devices for hours and hours daily continuously, the body gets tired and that leads to stress and headache. Most of us would say we are all stressed and that's why we are playing games or make us occupied with these digital devices because we are bored in our homes and we think these are stress relievers, but they aren't. They only cause stress, headaches, tiredness and sleeplessness and by using these again and again, it only makes it worse. These are just a few issues that I know, but there are many other difficulties that we don't know. All this time, what I said were not new for any of y'all. Then if I knew it, why aren't you able to stop it? And why is it so hard to get rid of them? What is stopping you, me, him, them, and all of us? Have you ever thought about it? I said, all of us are aware of this and we want to stop it, but we don't do it at the moment we decide. So we always skip it. For example, we'd say, I'll not touch the phone for tomorrow or I'll limit the game time from next month. And we never say, I'll stop it right now, stop it forever. As we always keep on postponing, it never becomes true. Again and again, it will only get postponed. And now it's too late to stop it like this. So let's try to get out of this digital addiction step by step and slowly at least, at least we are bringing it into our practical life. All right. First thing you all need to do is very, very simple. Change your lifestyle with new things. In short, take some events out from your daily routine and replace them with new things. For this, I'll bring the same example, Rupa took. If you're a person who would check the phone soon after you wake up, don't do that. Find something more interesting than a phone. I know, explaining life is super easy, but practically it's hard. But this is a place where you need to control your mind and stay calm. To start this practice, you could do a thing that you have planned to do later in your daily schedule. It can be meditation, homework, exercises, music work, it can be anything. You need your phone as soon as you wake up only because you don't have anything else to do, anything better to do at the time. 
if you could make yourself occupied with other useful things, you will not need the phone. In the same way, you could make your lifestyle productive by replacing your regular activities with other useful things. Think about it. Second thing, you can develop your skills by managing the time effectively. Most of us would say we have nothing useful to do at our homes. But we should also know that there are also people who have used this pandemic time productively to learn a lot and improve their knowledge in various ways. Third one, spend more time with the people around you. That's your family, your neighbors, your, the friends around you. So you need your device only because you feel lonely even when you're not. Try to make the time you have with them memorable and happy. Make them happy and you also be happy. If you understand that, you won't come back to the device again. So don't think. It is so addictive and as you start to use a device, you aren't able to escape from it. It's not the one that holds you. You are the one who's holding it. So leave and let it go. You can move freely unlike before. Try it, please. Thank you. Thank you, Naveen, Rupalavanjan and Joshua for the very informative. I learned a lot of new stuff. Can't argue with that. So did that. But anyway, Lavin, we collected a few graphic designs from our school a few days ago, right? Oh yeah, thank you for reminding me. Let's roll the clips. today's event has been. All good things must come to an end. Now, I welcome Samidu to give the word of thanks. A very good morning to all of you. Christian Lang once said, technology is a useful servant but a dangerous master. In today's context, this has become increasingly relevant to many of us and therefore important. If you think about it, IT is, well, magic in simple terms that is. I mean, who will have thought or imagined that we will one day be schooling through an online platform or conducting programs such as this very one using modern technology? Just take a close look around you and you will realize that given the present context with the ongoing pandemic, we have come to the point where our day-to-day -day lives are solely dependent on ICT, whether it be for education, information, communication, entertainment, work, and so much more. This in turn has led way for us to see the bigger picture and ponder on how this magic has a little bit of devilry of it. The moment technology transforms roles in our life from an useful servant to a dangerous master, that is when digital addiction is given birth to. Whether it be gaming, other forms of entertainment, inappropriate online content or online relationships, it is we who have chosen to bring out the bad side of technology into our own hands. Subsequently, it is us ourselves who will be compelled to suffer its consequences. It is indeed an honor for me to have been entrusted with the important task of delivering the vote of thanks as we celebrate ICT Day. Realistically and sadly, some of the most important events in our school calendar have been cancelled or could not be held due to the pandemic. But ICT Day is one of those events conducted no matter the prevailing situation. And this is exactly why we decided that ICT Day 2021 couldn't possibly be put off. Our deepest gratitude and appreciation to our headmaster, Reverend Father Nihal Fernando, for firstly giving us his blessings to proceed with this program and thereafter guiding us to the organizational process. Father was a great source of strength and encouragement despite his busy and tight schedule, always guiding us every step of the way. A very big thank you to you, dear Father, for all your help and advice in making this event a success. We acknowledge with thanks Mr. Ravin Vijay Tilakar for gracing today's occasion as our honorable chief guest, as well as for Mr. Deshan Kurvita, who guided our boys in a series of workshops on editing it is under his guidance that we were able to see a few displays of photos done by our fellow club members. We are also truly indebted to all of the other older boys who assisted us along the way. Next, 
I would like to acknowledge the unending support extended by Ms. Bukshan and Ms. Piyamuni, the teachers in charge of our club. Thank you very much for your continuous direction and guidance, which undoubtedly contributed towards making this program both a reality and a success. A heartfelt gratitude goes to the sectional heads, teachers, other members of the staff and the technical team, who directly or indirectly influenced and contributed towards this program. Thank you for all the time and effort you invested towards making this event happen, for which we are ever so grateful. Thank you very much to my fellow club members who quite literally worked day and night in the past few months to make this program a mere possibility and reality. Your contributions are truly invaluable and very much appreciated. Last but not least, my thanks to you, a wonderful audience, for patiently bearing with us throughout this program, which I trust you truly enjoyed. Your participation and contribution towards ICT Day 2021 is greatly appreciated. Finally, to any that I may have advertently not mentioned, my sincerest apologies and thanks nonetheless for all your support. In conclusion, I would like to leave you all with something to reflect on. A flame-giving light if used with control, a path to destruction when out of control. Like every tool is deprived in the hand of a fool, don't turn this great cyber gift into a fatal fool. Thank you. The Lord is my shepherd. I had such a great time, and it was truly honoring to host the first ever virtual ICT day. It was truly a dream. There is no second be bad. I thank all of our students for attending today's event and bearing with us. Father Nihal for always supporting us, as well as Ms. Dukshan and Ms. Piyomini for guiding us to make this event a success and a possibility. Last but not the least, I want to thank our ICT Club office bearers for organizing this unforgettable event. Thank you. This is Lavin Hash and Rushil signing off as the comparers of the first ever virtual ICT Day celebration of St. Thomas Preparatory School. Thank you and stay safe.